Trading with informs has always been an easy way to make coins in FIFA Ultimate Team. I personally always like investing with these types of players every single Wednesday because gradually over time they get rarer and rarer in the market as people stop playing the game but keep these players within their club. They use them for SBCs, they accidentally quick sell them and eventually these players will increase. It can take a few weeks and for you to make a real good coins is probably going to take a few months. So if you're looking to make coins right now, as in buy a player right this second and list them immediately on the market where you're able to make a profit, this method isn't going to work. That's why in today's video, we'll be going through a very simple trade method that will help you make coins with ease by looking at special cards right now. But before we do get into the video, if you're looking to get some very easy coins, which saves you from having to make any type of investments or make any types of trades with special cards, then there is no better place than Mule Factory. Head over there to get yourself some cheap, fast FIFA 22 coins, completely reliable. And if you use Fnatic 5 at checkouts, you'll also be able to get yourself a 5% discount. Link can be found in the description down below. Getting back into the video, this video will focus on team of the week players, but it can really be done with any type of special card. I'm just using team of the weeks to make it as basic as possible for you to understand. But if a new promo has just been released and there's options for you to use this method and put this method into action, then by all means do it and you'll be able to make similar amounts of profit. It can be done with all types of special cards and it's purely down to most people can't be bothered to do this so that if you put the effort in, you'll be able to make coins. The method that we'll talk about within this video is being able to look at special cards and changing their positions. Now this really isn't too difficult to do, but because there is a very small amount of people that actually do this, well, they're the ones making all the coins. And when you do actually look for players out of their default position, there's not too many of them. So for this, to begin with, we need a list of Team of the Week players, and there's no better place than heading over to the likes of FootWiz or FootBin, who both have a section on their site which shows all the previous Team of the Weeks, as well as all the other different promos that have been released. This will give you a list of loads of different players that you can use, and they're in order of what type of promo or what type of Team of the Week they belong to. You can click on anyone at random, and then look at the players that are involved. Typically, you can use any player within that team team as long as it's a player that can be changed out of its default position. So for example, you can't change goalkeepers or centre backs, so it's pointless actually looking at those players. It's also not recommended to look at a right back or a left back and convert them to a left wing back or a right wing back, but you can do this the other way. So if you find a player within that team, which is a right wing back or a left wing back by default, you can convert them to be a right back or a left back. I know it might sound confusing, but it just comes down to not that many people use five of the back teams, especially within FIFA 22. So once you convert them to a wing back, it's just going to take a bit longer to sell. They may still sell eventually, but you're going to have to relist them several times. For the players that I use within this video, I use the variety of players within different positions. So it just goes to show that you can use any player that gets converted to any position. I use Benega, who's by default a center mid, converting him down to a CDM. I use Blas, who is by default a cam, but I converted him to a center forward. I use Veroni, who was a right wing back, and I converted him to a right back. And finally, I use Gabbiadini, who is by default a center forward, and I converted him to a striker. For each player, I did just randomly select them. That was part of the team that I did find on FootWiz or FootBin, but I did do a bit of research. I did want to go and check whether or not there was any of that specific player that's already been converted. I like looking for players that haven't been converted. So once I look for them in a different position, I want there to be no results found. Or worst case scenario, I want there to be only one, but then being set at the maximum price. This gives me way more than enough room for me to actually dictate the price as long as it's listed appropriately. So for example, when I looked at Gabby Adini, there was quite a few there as a center forward, but the second I looked for him as a striker, nothing was listed so that I knew I could go and buy him within the center forward position, get a position modifier, which converts him to a striker, and I can list him, making sure that I'm listing him at a price where I'm able to make profit, but still at a price that other players are going to buy just to save them time. Once I found a player and a position where there's none of them, I do need to go and buy a position modifier. You do need to calculate the price of that position modifier into the transaction. Otherwise, if you calculate this wrong, you'll always be making a loss. 
And there are some position modifiers which I do just avoid because of how expensive they are. For example, the cam to center mid is one of the most expensive position modifiers you can have within the game. Normally it sells anywhere between four to 5,000 coins. So if I was to go and get a player that plays within the cam and I want to convert them down to a center mid, I need to list them for about eight or 9,000 coins above their normal default price just because I need to take in consideration the price for the position modifier plus also the 5% EA tax. And for me, that price is just way too high. So I look at other types of positions. If I can, I'll convert a cam to a center forward more likely than what I would do for a cam to a center mid, despite the center mid being a much better and more used position within the game. So this is always something that you need to bear in mind. If you want to accept that risk, then by all means, go for it. This may actually play a lot better if you was to go and look for more expensive players. So if you change the position of a player that's worth over 100,000 coins, that extra 5k isn't as big of a deal. Whereas me looking for players that's at 15,000 coins and add an extra 5k to make them 20k. It feels like a much bigger jump just because of the lower price. But once you've found and bought the player and you've got the position modifier, you do need to take the time to store them to your club, apply the position modifier to that player and then list them. You don't want to overdo this where you have about 20 of the exact same player. This is where you will flood the market and as soon as someone sees that they're all listed at the exact same price within the exact same time, someone will see that there's a way that you can make coins by doing this and they'll do the exact same thing with the player that you've listed except they'll undercut you and you're probably going to be pushed out. So what I tend to do is list about one to five of those players. As soon as they're listed, I'll then look for a completely different player to use. When it comes to how much profit you should be looking for each of these cards that you're listing, I normally aim to have around 1,000 or 2,000 coins profit after EA tax. It does depend on the player himself and also how many are already currently listed. I will also list them all at different prices so that if I do get five of the exact same player within that position, I'll list one as the cheapest, which I'm looking to sell relatively quickly. And then the other cards that are available, they'll all be listed at different prices with different times. So I may list one player at 21,000 coins for one hour, looking for them to actually sell within that hour. But the next one that I list, I'll list at 22,000 coins at three hours. I then may list another one at 23,000 coins, also at three hours. Hopefully that first player will sell within that hour. And if nothing else gets listed within the meantime, well, the next cheapest will yet again be mine, except now they're at a higher price being 22,000 coins. If they don't sell within that time limit, that's when I'll bring that one at 22,000 down to 21, the one at 23 down to 22, and then so on. This is always something that I've done and it's always worked well for me. As these players aren't technically the cheapest on the market for that specific card, it does take some time to sell. They may not always sell within the first hour, but as long as you keep on relisting and they're the cheapest within that position, eventually someone will look to go and find that player within that position and they'll buy the cheapest one there. These are the types of people that are looking to get these cards for their team. And yes, everyone does like to point this out with position change methods. They could go and do it themselves. They could go and buy a player, send them to their club, buy the position modifier, send that to their club, apply it to that player, and it would be done slightly cheaper than if they was to buy the card on the market. But the reason that they buy the card on the market isn't because it's cheaper, it's because it's easy. It saves them a lot of time because we're doing the work. And once we're doing the work, we're putting it at a price which has got a premium on top. And it's that premium that gives us the profit. An extra couple thousand coins just to go and buy this card just because it's already done, it's already easy for them to get, is worth it for a lot of different people. So those are the people that we're targeting and those are the people that will eventually buy these cards. It just means that we need to wait for them to actually look for these cards to actually buy them. So just make sure that once they do expire that they are getting relisted and that they're always active on the market. One of the best times in which you can list these cards is the 12 hours overnight. So just before I go to bed, before I do anything, quickly log on to Ultimate Team and just list every single card that I still have within my club for 12 hours so that by the time I wake up the following morning, get everything done, log on to Ultimate Team, 
some of those players have sold overnight as other people are looking to buy them within different time zones or just a different time in which they like to play FIFA. It's also great because most people forget to list their cards overnight so there's a lot less live transfers, giving a lot of other people that are still playing at this time less options, also increasing the price of some of these players. I've always been able to sell quite a lot of these cards when I change their positions overnight just because of this. Anyway guys, this is exactly how you can be trading with any type of special card by changing its position. It's another trading method where you don't have much competition. It's relatively easy just to search for a card, buy the cheapest one, change the position and then list it at a higher price. Or you can dictate the price as long as there is nothing else listed in the exact same search criteria. If you want to maximize profits, you can take even more time to actually bid on informs and also bid on the position modifiers. But for this video, I just did it plain and basic and just bought the cheapest one on a buy now both for the players and also the position modifiers. If you do have any questions about anything, then please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see you.